In this video, we're going to work on the Week 3 Typography activity. The key here is to create a makeshift logo using Text Tool in Photoshop while applying what you've learned about typography, color, and design tension. Keep in mind that you're trying to communicate as much information about your product or service to your customer as possible using color and type to try to give as much information about your product. Try to think about who your customer is and what the price point is for that product and make the decisions that seem to work. First thing I'm going to do is click on File, New. The dialog box that comes up allows me to select the dimensions for this document. For this case, I'm just creating a logo, so I really only need a surface of about 3 by 1 inches. For the sake of this ex exercise, since we wouldn't normally create a logo in Photoshop, you would normally do this in Illustrator, but just for the sake of being able to play around with the tools that we're using in the Type tool, I'm going to keep my resolution at 300 pixels per inch. If over here you don't have inches as your default, just click on the down to carrot here and you'll select from a variety of different tools here, a different options, measuring sizes, pixels, inches, centimeters, and so on. I'm going to keep it at RGB, 8-bit, and my background content is going to be white. But if you wanted to select a background color, you could do that here by clicking on the down caret and clicking on background color and then checking this box here. When you check the box here, the color picker document um, dialog box will open. And you'll notice here that there's this sliding scale of palettes. You can click within this palette anywhere and you'll notice that the palette to the left here changes. I can select from within this palette at any time. And while I'm doing that, it'll show me my current, which is white, and then the new color that I've just selected. Because sometimes just clicking and seeing that little circle isn't really enough. You need a little bit more. I could also dial in the color specifically if I wanted to here. RGB, CMYK, or the hex code here. In this case, I don't actually want a background color, but if I did, I would click OK. If I didn't, I would click Cancel, which is what I'm going to do right now. At this point, I'm just going to click OK. I've got a 3 by 1 inch document, 300 pixels, pixels per inch, RGB 8-bit, with a background color of white. And I'm going to click OK. Here's my canvas. My canvas is at 100%. That means that this is about the size that it truly is. I can control plus or control minus to come closer to or to zoom out. This is a really great thing to do while you're working on a project, control plus and minus, which allows you to zoom in and zoom out depending on the preferences and how you like to work. For those of you on a Mac, you can use the command plus and minus, which will do the same thing. You'll notice here now at the bottom that I'm now looking at 200%. So this canvas size is 200% what it really is. It's zoomed to 200%. I like working a little bit closer, but that's entirely preferential. Now, I'm going to go over here on the left-hand side, and I'm going to locate the Type Tool. You'll notice the Type Tool is just slightly beneath the halfway point on your um, uh, toolbar. So over here, I'm going to click on the Type Tool, but I'm going to click on the down carrot just in the bottom right-hand corner, that little triangle, so that I can see all of the different tools that are nested beneath it. I've got the horizontal type tool, the vertical type tool, horizontal type mask, and vertical type mask. What I'd really like to do is I'd like to work with the horizontal type tool. So I'm going to select that one, but please feel free at any time to experiment. I'm going to go ahead and click within my, my uh, canvas, and I'm going to start typing. My first word is imported. Now my two-word combination is imported shoes, and I'm thinking it's the kind of store where you could probably buy one or two of a specific size of maybe some high-end shoes. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go from my Type tool to this Move tool here. So I'm going to click on the Move tool, and you'll notice that I've got these transform controls around this word. If you don't see transform controls on yours, you can have them selected by looking up here at your options toolbar and clicking on the show transform controls. If you don't have them, just click on the check mark next to the word and you'll now be able to see your transform controls. I like seeing the transform controls because as you've probably noticed when you typed, the size of the type that you just created might not be the size that you want. Now you can go ahead and go back to the type tool to change the size of your font, 
highlight the words that you want or highlight the areas that you want changed and go ahead and change the font here. Or you can go back to the Move tool and you can select the corners. And you'll notice as I'm dragging around the corners of my transform controls, I've got a bendy, I've got a diagonal with two little arrows on either side, and I've got a black triangle. The black triangle allows me to move it. So I can move this word by click and dragging it around the screen. The next one is this bendy. If I click and drag, oh, excuse me, I clicked too long. I'm just going to do a control Z there. If I click and drag it, or just slightly drag it to the up and down, you'll notice that it slightly changes the angle of it. And again, I can control Z or command Z to undo what I've just done. The last one is this diagonal. See how it goes kind of, where are you? There it is, diagonal. If I click and drag, I can enlarge this or shrink this. Now, something that you might want to notice is that while I'm doing this, I might accidentally stretch it up or stretch it out. It's not really such a problem with text. It might actually give you an effect that you like. However, I'm going to control Z because if I really wanted to maintain the aspect ratio, which means I don't want to stretch or distort it, I could do that by clicking on the shift key. This is particularly important if you were actually trying to resize the picture of a person. You wouldn't want to distort it. So to maintain aspect ratio, click on the shift button and then click and drag from the outside. No matter where my cursor is, you'll notice, no matter where my cursor is, it will not allow me to stretch or distort. It will only allow me to increase the size and maintain the aspect ratio. Now I'm pretty happy with that word. I'm going to go ahead and move this so you'll notice that my cursor changed to that black triangle. I'm within the word and I'm just going to slip it up there. I'm just going to move it up there. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the text tool and I, oh, well it's asking me now, do you want to apply the transformation? I do. I'm going to say apply. I'm going to go ahead over here to my text tool and I'm going to type in the next word. The next word in my word two word combination happens to be shoes. So now I've typed in the word shoes, and you know what? I think I'd really like to highlight this and change the color. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight this. I'm going to go up here into my options toolbar, and I'm going to find this little black box, which is the text color box. It happens to be black because my text is black right now. I'm going to double click, and I'm going to get the color picker tool, or the color picker text box again. Once again, I can select from within any one of these palettes. I can dial in a color directly, or I can choose a color that I think will work. I really think that this would work best with a nice hot red. So I'm going to go ahead and select one that I like, quite like this one, and I'm going to say OK. Now it's highlighted right now, so I'm going to go over to the tool, the uh, Move tool. I'm going to click on the Move tool, and I'm going to go ahead and move this around a bit. Where might I want it to go? Well, I could create some nice design tension just with a little bit of overlap. You'll notice just by having the S play into the T and the H breaking into the this word imported, it kind of creates this really interesting relationship between the two objects. I still haven't played around with the actual fonts, so I do still want to do that. But before I do that, I want to show you guys over here on this layers panel over here. You'll notice that I have a background layer, and I have the word imported, which is on another layer, and I have the word shoes, which is on a separate layer. If I want to move the word shoes or do something to the word shoes, I have to be on the proper layer. If I want to go and change something to the word imported, I have to be on the imported layer. Let's go back to the imported layer and let's start playing around with the font. I'm going to go back to the imported layer. I'm going to go over here to the text tool. I'm going to highlight the word that I want to change and I'm going to change the font. I'm going to go up here to my options panel and I'm going to change it from Calibri to something that I think suits this a little bit better. I'm going to choose a font that makes me think of you know, a nice crate stamp, a nice stamp on a crate, something that, whoops, something that would give us the impression that this is something that's stamped on a box, maybe that comes from overseas. 
I know one that actually does look like that. I think I'm going to see if I can locate it. It's called stencil. I kind of like the way that that real bulky, bold uh, stencil look works. Now I'm going to resize this. I'm going to take this and I'm going to click over here on my move tool again. I'm going to click shift so that I maintain aspect ratio. I'm going to just change the location and resize it a little bit. I'm also going to tilt this a bit. I think I'd like to create a little bit of design tension in a way that creates an interesting relationship between the word imported and shoes. And just by changing that tilt a little bit, I really have created a bit of design tension there. Now I'm going to go back to the word shoes, but before I do that, I either have to hit enter or click on this commit transform controls because I've made some changes to it. So in order for me to move on, I have to commit to what I've just done. Now I can go back to the word shoes. I'm on the shoes layer now, and now I want to play around with this font. So I'm going to click on the type tool again, select the word shoes, and I'm going to go ahead and change my font from Calibri to something perhaps a little more interesting. While you look at your fonts, you'll notice that, um, that um, Photoshop provides you with some samples of what you can actually see what the font looks like. In this case, I know that I'd like to try this um, this font called Rage. So I'm going to see if I can find it. Is it in here? Rage Italic. There we go. And there it is. So now I'm going to go back up to the Move tool. Click on the Move tool. And I'm going to place this in a way that kind of interferes with the actual word imported and kind of create a little bit of design tension that way. While I'm at it, I think I'd actually like to go ahead and change the angle. So I'm going to go ahead, wait for that bendy, turn a little bit, create a nice little interesting interaction between the two. I'm going to click on my move tool or click on the check mark for apply transformation and accept it. So here I've got two different types of fonts that play well together. I've got an interesting color scheme with just the solid black which says something about, you know, something that's really solid and, uh, and, and reliable, and the word shoes in red, nice passionate red color, and a font that's actually kind of a little bit um, fun and sexy and playful. So here I've got a really nice combination between the two, and I think this addresses the requests of the assignment pretty well. Now I'm ready to save the document, so I'm going to go File, Save As, there we go. And I'm going to go ahead and name this. So I think what I would do is I would call this uh, Chantel Logo Week 3. I'm going to go ahead and change this from a standard Photoshop document to an actual, to a PNG file. A PNG file will maintain some of the edges nicely for me. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. I'm going to say OK. And I'm going to post it to the discussion board and slate and talk about and justify some of the choices that I made and why. Now it's your turn. Have fun with this, play around, experiment, and uh, see what you can come up with.